Hello! Today we're going to discuss how we analyze motion mathematically. So far we've done a good job of looking at how motion is analyzed graphically. Let's see if we can come up with some mathematical relationships from those graphs. So we've talked so far about objects that have constant velocity. In our graph here we have a position versus time graph and we mentioned the importance of the slope of this line. Okay? We know that generally slope is defined as rise over run or change in our vertical variable divided by the change in our horizontal variable. Okay? Our vertical or a variable on our vertical axis in this case is position. So our slope is going to be defined as the change in the position. Okay, remember delta means change, final minus initial. So the final position minus the initial position divided by the change in the time. Okay, the final time minus the initial time. And if we were to label that on our axis, our final position would be here on our axis. In our initial position, I'm going to use x not meaning initial, so we, we use that little subscript zero means initial, and then here would be our initial time, and here would be our final time, and we can plug that in and solve for the change in our position divided by the change in our time to give us the slope. Okay, so if we look at this, we'll see that this is delta x. We use an x to represent position. And we're not going to put delta t because time is always positive. Okay, we can't go back in time, unfortunately. So we're going to put just a t there. And that equals our velocity. Okay, and again, we're talking this equation holds true if your velocity is the average velocity or the constant velocity. Okay, the change in position over time. Okay, let's say our velocity is not constant. Let's say our velocity is changing. So notice now the variable on our vertical axis is velocity and the variable on our horizontal axis is again time. Okay, so if we again label our initial and finals, we'll see that this is the final velocity, this is the initial velocity, this is the initial time, and that is the final time. Okay, so we find the slope of this line. Instead of finding the change in position over time, we're finding the change in the velocity over the change in time. Okay, so final velocity minus initial velocity, delta v over t, and that's v final minus v initial over time. Okay, and that is equal to the object's acceleration. Okay, the object's acceleration. And if we rearrange that equation, we get that the velocity at any point in the future is equal to the initial velocity plus the object acceleration times the time that it is accelerating. Okay, so here's another important equation. V, which is the speed at any point in the future, okay, sometimes you'll see VF as a subscript, equals initial velocity plus acceleration times time. Okay, <clears throat> so we've been analyzing the slope here. The other thing you can do with a graph is you can find the area under the curve. Okay, this is something you may not have done before. It's kind of a calculus operation, something called an integral, if you've taken any calculus. But we can also figure this out um, just using a graph and finding the area. Okay, so in this case, we are given a velocity versus time graph. Okay, and let's say the question we want to know, what is the displacement if you're given a velocity versus time graph? And we're going to find the area under the curve here. Okay, so just to flash back, we said that the slope of an of a position versus time graph gave us the velocity. We found that velocity equals displacement over time. Okay, okay. So just remember that equation. That's what we're going to start with. So if I want to find the area of this graph, the shape that this is is a rectangle. Okay, and I want to find the area of the rectangle. Okay, how do you find the area of a rectangle? So think back when you learned this many years ago. How do you find the area of a rectangle? And that of course is going to be length times width. Okay. So in this case, our length is going to be time, and our width is going to be whatever our velocity is. So we're just going to call this v. Okay? So there's our width is here. Okay? And our length is there. Okay? So the area of this is equal to length times width, which in this case is equal to velocity times the time. Okay? Our velocity is constant. So in this case, there is nothing changing there, so it's just the, that velocity divided by the time. 
Okay, and we saw before, if we look at our equation up here, we see that V equals delta X divided by T. If I rearrange that, I get that delta X is equal to V times T. And what do I have down here? V times T, okay? So the area under the curve of a velocity versus time graph is equal to the object's displacement, okay? So area under the curve of velocity versus time equals displacement, okay? So area under V versus T equals displacement. Okay, so we see this for a constant velocity object, but we know the velocities are not always constant. Okay, that'd be a very boring world if the velocity was always constant. So it's not. So let's see if the, when the velocity is not constant, how we do the same thing, all right? So we said before that the area under the curve equals velocity times time, which would give us displacement. Okay, so again, we're going to find the area under the curve. But what geometric shape is this? It is not simply a rectangle. No, no, no. It is a triangle. Okay, so how do we find the area of a triangle? We'll look at the area here, the blue shade. Okay, so area in this case is equal to one half the base times the height. Okay, one half the base times the height. So if we plug that in, our base is time, our height is the change in the velocity, okay? This may not necessarily start at zero, but this will be the change in the velocity, okay? Change in velocity. We found before the change in velocity was in another relationship, okay? That relationship we had before was that acceleration equal change in velocity over time. Okay, so if I rearrange that equation, I get that displacement, or I'm sorry, the change in velocity is equal to acceleration times time. So I can take where I have change in velocity and plug in A times T right there. Okay, so now my area equation is going to be one half AT times t, if I just rearrange my equation there, it makes a, little, makes a little more sense to me, it makes it look prettier that way. And so I get one half a t squared, and we said before that the area under a velocity versus time graph is displacement. And so we get here that our displacement is equal to one half a t squared, okay? That is if there's a non-constant velocity, if the initial velocity equals zero, okay? Okay, so if there is an initial velocity of zero, then we can find the displacement using that equation. Okay, that's a very specific equation. So actually we're not gonna use it very often. I'm not gonna dot it in or make a box because it's not an equation that I think we're gonna use very often. The next page, this is the one we're gonna use. And this is where we're gonna find the area of, in this case, it looks like a trapezoid. Okay, it's still a velocity versus time graph. And we know the area under the velocity versus time graph is going to equal displacement, okay? We just have to find the area of this shape, okay? And if you know the area of a trapezoid equation, good for you, you can use that, okay? Personally, I don't know what it is, but I do know what a trapezoid is made up of a rectangle and a triangle, okay? So we set this up, we have a rectangle here, okay? A red rectangle and we're gonna have a blue triangle and that's gonna make up our purple trapezoid see that red plus purple equals blue or red plus blue equals purple look at that okay so let's analyze this now based on what we've already learned okay we know over here that this is the initial velocity and we know that, that is the final velocity correct good okay we can see if we look at our red rectangle, we can find the area of that rectangle by finding length times width, correct? And if our width in this case is initial velocity and our width is time, we can find the area of the red section to be V naught, oops, wrong color, V naught times time. OK, 
okay? V naught times time is the area of the red rectangle, okay? And our blue triangle, we know one half the base times the height. So again, it's going to be one half the base, which is time, times the height, which is change in velocity. What we saw for on the previous slide, we said this was one half a t squared, okay? And to find the area, we want to add those two things together. So our area in this case equals the initial velocity times the time plus one half a t squared, okay? And that equals the change in the position, which we call the displacement. And just as a reminder, this is final minus initial, so the position at some point in time minus the initial position. And if we rearrange that and solve for x, we get that x equals whatever the initial position of the object was, plus its initial velocity times the time, plus one half its acceleration times the time squared, okay? And that is an equation that you will see on your formula sheet all semester long, okay? And it comes from this graphical analysis that we've been talking about, okay? Everything we've done so far has been in terms of time. If you're not given time, there's one equation you're going to use, okay? I'm not going to derive the equation at this point. We'll talk about it later on. We'll do something called the work energy theorem. And that equation says that the final velocity of an object squared is equal to its initial velocity squared plus two times its acceleration times the change in its position. Okay? And this equation actually comes from combining two of the equations that we did earlier on. However, we're not going to combine those here and go through all that algebra. We're going to stop it right here. Okay? So the equations that you need to know are this one. Okay? These are the ones that are going to be on your formula, formula sheet. This equation, draw a line so we know that we can have time in these. Okay? The VF equals V naught plus AT and x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. And just remember what all these things mean, okay? x is position, x naught is initial position, v naught is initial speed, t of course is time, a is acceleration, um, and you go through all those, okay? So those are our, how we could analyze motion using calculations and math. Uh, not going to get into a whole lot of them, but these are things that we still need to know how to do. Thanks!